厄介なもの踏みつぶしてあげましょう Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, we're going to talk about the question that is on everyone's mind lately, it seems like, in the community in the wake of the Overlord collab. And that is Is Albedo actually any good? Does she need a buff? Well, judging by the reactions that I'm seeing online, uh, maybe. Because, well, if the in game reviews are anything to be believed, she's not doing super great, right? The general opinion seems to be she is pretty bad. But I still have some confidence, and that's because, you know, in the past, the Epic Seven community has been really bad at evaluating knights, right? So in the past, former community manager Nue was confused as to why some content creators didn't think Bellium was going to be a strong hero on release. Lo and behold, she was incredibly strong upon release. Unbound Knight Arwell wasn't seen as particularly strong as evidenced by many of the YouTube comments during that time on videos surrounding her. Of course, we now know that she's one of the best tanks in the game. And of course, famously, nearly Everyone was wrong about I Karina. Well, almost everyone. Because your boy, his first impressions video about I Karina, that thing aged like fine wine. Thank you very much. So, let's talk about Albedo. We're also going to talk about her value that I think she brings to your team, and also some numbers. So, the number one complaint that I keep seeing online is that her damage is simply too low. And, well, maybe she might not be a damage dealer, but I think I can understand why people feel like she should be a damage dealer because, well, uh, her preview trailer, uh, the match that they used, she was critting on every attack. So people just assume she's probably a bruiser. And, well, uh, her artifact is similar to Rocket Punch, which is, you know, commonly played on Karina, who's one of the best bruisers in the entire game. So, I decided to run a bunch of damage calculations on the character. So let's start with the assumptions that I used for all of this math. First up, I used 1536 attack. This is Albedo's base attack with an I-90 weapon, as well as a plus 30 of her artifact, 3F. 3F is what most people are trying to play on her, it's what's on her banner, and if it's good, no doubt people will roll for more copies to try to max it out, or they will just eventually bottle it to plus 30, very akin to Karina's Rocket Punch. So that's why we decided to go with that number. Secondly, the target that I'm going to be attacking has around 1,000 defense just for simplicity's sake. This is usually what you'd see around like uh, Auden to have as a defensive score, right? Just to put it into perspective. I will go over a 1,500 defense example a bit later for some bruisers, namely Navy Captain Landy, because that's usually where she lands. But again, for right now, the numbers you're going to see 1,000 defense. Third, I used a fixed speed as well as comparable build qualities on the same sets. So I was comparing speed set versus speed set, health set versus health set, and so on and so forth. I tried to get roughly the same amount of equipment score for every build that seems realistic for you to actually try. This way, we're really only trying to measure basically bulk stats versus damage stats ratios. Essentially, if I go full damage with not too much bulk, and then I go uh, basically all bulk, what is the difference? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So the first build that I want to talk about is one where we go over 300% critical hit damage, but our bulk suffers at around like say 1,350 defense and 21k HP. This is kind of like, I guess what you'd expect from like a full damage Illinav style of character, right? So with this much HP, your 3F tacks on an extra 1,768 damage. Do note that 3F's damage proc is affected by defense and damage sharing. And this is really important because if you use her S3 Rage of Nazarak on a target and it lands a defense break, well, 3F does more damage. In this case, 2,720 versus the 1,768 you would get normally. Overall, 
This build is looking to do around 8,000 HP on an S1, maxing out to about 13k if you land the defense break on her S3. Next up, we're going to be going a bit lower with 250% critical hit damage with around 24k HP. The damage numbers on this are pretty similar here to the very first build. You can again expect around 8,000 total damage on the S1, and if you land the defense break on S3, again, about 13k. Next up, we're going to amp our HP to 26k, but lower our critical hit damage to 220, which is simply what you would get from just a critical hit damage necklace, and then not picking up any critical hit damage on your other five pieces. This combination so far seems to be the best across the board in terms of damage versus bulk. Well, at least at a glance. Next up, I tried 27,800 HP with the base critical hit damage. So that's 100% critical hit chance, but only 150% critical hit damage. And, well, the numbers here are quite a bit lower across the board. This suggests to me that if you want to build crit chance on the character at all, you need to have some amount of critical hit damage to make up for the lack of bulk. Personally, this is probably the worst way to take the character overall. Second to last, we have 30,000 HP with no critical hit chance and no critical hit damage. With 30k health, this affords you the ability to pick up some extra defense and for your fourth substat slot from those pieces, pick up either your choice of effectiveness or effect resistance without too many drawbacks. And then finally, we have a full bulk build here at 33k HP with literally no room for any ER or effectiveness or critical hit chance or critical hit damage. Basically, any free stat you have, you're dumping it into flat HP with like stat swaps, right? And honestly, damage here is pretty solid. It does roughly 88% of the damage that you'd expect from that first build that we talked about, the one that's 300% critical hit damage. And it also just happens to have nearly twice the amount of effective HP. Basically, 33k HP with 1500 defense is twice as hard to kill. So, now that you've seen those numbers against a 1000 defense target, what happens if we decide to use these same numbers when fighting a character that has higher defense, such as, say, maybe Navy Captain Landy, who averages around 1500 defense? Well, that starts to paint a different picture. You see, the base damage on the moves goes way down, but the damage from 3F starts to try to do a little bit more of the heavy lifting. When you factor in the defense break from Rage of Nazarak, should you land it, well, things get pretty interesting. Notice how, when we look at the other builds, that the 33k HP build, when you factor in the 3F proc versus a defense broken unit, after the fact, does almost as much damage as if you would use the S3 with the full crit damage 21k HP build. And remember, the 33k HP build, well, that's twice as hard to kill. So, what I'm getting at here is that Rage of Nazarak, when you have a higher health build, used correctly, can chunk some of these bruisers that we fight for 35 to 50% of the maximum health that we usually expect to see on. With proper speed tuning, it's possible for you to use Rage of Nazarak to set up a guaranteed kill. Essentially, Albedo goes first, strips the enemy, defense breaks them, chunks them for a huge amount of their HP, and then you get some kind of follow-up from a slightly slower damage-based character, like say maybe a Savior Odin, or maybe you have your own Landy or your own Abyssal Euphine waiting behind her. To me, that is invaluable. Your tank slot has an on-demand delete button should you have things set up properly on your account. That is, in my opinion, very, very valuable. And again, she can do this from essentially the tank spot. So for this section, the numbers for me at least, the takeaways are basically three things. Number one, the straight bulk build produces comparable damage numbers to a glass cannon build but is more susceptible to debuffs and, well, because you don't have the extra effectiveness, it might not actually land that strip and defense break to set up that kill scenario that we talked about. Number two, if you want damage on this character, around 200 to 220 critical hit damage seems fine, and you should then push your health as far as possible, at least 26k, maybe 27 or 28 if your gear is, like, really, really good. 
To me, this paints a picture similar to a DPS character like Bellion, where we are basically going for like the low 200s in critical hit damage and putting the rest in bulk. And finally, number three, it is possible to gear around 1500 defense with 30k HP with some mixture of effectiveness or effect resistance. Your damage will be lower, but it's still roughly around 88 to 90 percent of the full damage build and what it is getting and it obviously gives you some either resistance to debuffs or the ability to set up a kill should your actual team be tuned properly in summation i think that this is a character that wants to be as tanky as you can possibly get it with your choice of off stats to supplement your playstyle if you're more aggressive you could chase the crit stats if you're slower you can chase the effect resistance if you want to actually get a wombo combo, chase the effectiveness. I personally see no reason on this character to not prioritize high HP, especially when I'm significantly harder to kill with only roughly a 10 to 12% damage fall. -off. Speaking of harder to kill, I want to talk about something else in this video, and that is Aegis Unfold, her skill 2. This thing gives 20% critical hit damage reduction. For reference, Adamant Shield only gives 16% critical hit damage reduction. Crimson Armin's Security State gives 15% damage reduction. Granted, that is from all sources. 20% is a pretty big amount is what I'm getting at, and it is incredibly relevant in the current metagame, especially if you are somebody like me who cannot go fast and plays turn two. Just think about this for a second. Protection set Crimson Armin, as I'm recording this video, is seen as the best damage mitigation source of the game because of things like she can hold Aureus, the Security State Bastion, and again, the aforementioned Protection Set. Now, Albedo's Aegis Unfold mitigates more damage than Security State, assuming you are against a critical hit damage set of characters, which, last I checked, is the vast majority of characters in Epic 7 that you're going to come up against. Albedo is also a 5-star Sagittarius Knight, which is the same stat line as Fallen Cecilia, the character that used to be the poster child for having good bulk in Epic 7. Crimson Armin? She is a 4-star, and while she has more defense than Albedo, her HP is a good 10% lower than Albedo's, and HP is king in the land of Holding Arius as well as Protection Set. So now... Let's look at some examples of how Albedo could save your life if you're someone like me who plays, again, turn two. The characters that have been the bane of my existence this season have been Genoa as well as Midnight Galileus. Because, well, both of them just have the ability to delete my tanks in one hit, and most of my bruisers also in one hit. Now, what would happen if there was a character that came out that reduced the damage that those characters dealt by 20%? Here's what Genoa looks like on a destruction build with a two-piece torrent along with 4,000 attack, 350% critical hit damage, right? That is basically what I see most of my peers using, so that's what I went with when I ran the calculations. And for good measure, I gave him Enrage so that that way he gets the guaranteed S3 follow-up, and I also gave him attack buff for not only just the S3, but the S1 as well. And well... His damage against a 1500 defense tank, it's only around 24k with the whole combo. In that scenario, your tank probably still lives. Honestly, depending on who it is, your bruiser might actually live in that scenario as well. Now, what would happen if we gave him greater attack buff? Well, in that scenario, he's doing around 28,000 damage. It's not much help, but some of my tanks still live in this scenario. And my Albedo certainly lives. So, yeah, sure. I'll take it. It's not perfect, but at least I survive and I might get a turn. And that turn might actually be the difference between me winning or losing a game. So, what about Midnight Galilius? Well, she does 25,685 damage. That's assuming that you have 4,000 attack and 300 critical hit damage and you are on Torrent Set. And you also have the lowest possible health that you can have on the character with an I-90 helmet and the artifact Windrider. These stats, this build, according to Hero Library, is the most common stat line that you will see on Galilius in the Emperor and Legend levels. For good measure, I also gave her the attack buff and bigger buff in case you drafted her with Conqueror Lilius. Most tanks 
still live through this, right? You might be on death's door, but your tank is still alive, which means that you can turn things around. Albedo in these scenarios will survive and she could turn around and essentially use her bicorn attack and also her basic skill on Gala. And the combination of both of those things, assuming that you have 3F, well, well, even on the lowest damage build that I talked about in this video, the Gala is probably dead, right? And I don't know about you, but having a character that lets me survive versus these two heroes in particular makes me pretty happy. I think to me, that gives some legitimate value to the character. That plus the damage numbers suggests to me that this character is better than whatever the two point something or whatever hero rating people are giving it inside of the game. I get where some of you guys are coming from out there, right? Even when I play her, she doesn't feel super exciting, right? She feels really, really underwhelming, really mid. But when I look at these numbers on paper, right? Especially the ability to survive a character like Galilius, and I look at my win rate with her since I've been playing with her the last couple of days, it's really hard for me to say that she is bad. Is she amazing? Mm, I don't know. But bad? Certainly not. If you still think this character needs a buff, then perhaps consider buffing the Bicorn portion of S2 because, well, the base damage is kind of trash, and without 3F, it's ultimately forgettable. And also, one buff strip isn't exactly great in a game where we currently have uh, two buff strips. I don't know if giving her two buff strips is too good. I mean, look at what it did for Biblis. Um, but, you know, it's something. I do think that there is something that uh, a little bit extra that we need on that S2. But yeah, knowing all this now... I want to hear from you guys and girls out there. How has your experience been with Albedo? Do you think I'm kind of crazy with this? Like, because again, I think she's pretty solid when I look at all of this stuff on paper. But if I haven't convinced you, then let me know down in the comments section below or just hit me up on Discord and we can feel free to just kind of hash it out and talk more about it. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.